trains, planes, and automobiles. There are many different forms of transportation that make going from one place to another quite easy these days, even very long distances. I know many people here traveled over the Christmas break and celebration because many people that belong to this church have family members that live all over the country. Kind of part of the nature of being someone that lives in Phoenix is having relatives that don't live here, perhaps in the Midwest or in California. So if you traveled over the past month, how did you travel? Did you take a train? Probably not. Perhaps a plane or a car. These are the modes of transportation that bring the far away nearby. It can be difficult living far away from your loved family members, but with these current modes of transportation, it's made it quite easy. You can go see them. Already having the uh, cause to go see them, which is your love, you now have easy modes of transportation, a train, a plane, automobile, many different forms of transportation, those that bring the far away nearby. Back in the day of Isaiah, transportation wasn't quite as easy. When people lived far off, they would have to go by foot, some by ship, or perhaps by animal, but it wasn't quite as easy as it was today. So when they call out to the far away islands, these are people who are far off. But talking to how to come near, using this as an image of those who are far away from God, brought far away by their sins, and brought near by modes of transportation, even greater than those that we see today, bringing those who were far away near God. As we look at this section in Isaiah today, we see that Jesus brings the far away nearby. Jesus does this with his life through the means of grace. Today we look in a section of the book of Isaiah, the great scroll of Isaiah, a book of the Bible that's just chocked full of prophecies regarding the Messiah. And here is one of the very memorable ones. It's known as a servant song. In the book of Isaiah, there are many different illustrations of the coming servant. Essentially, the picture is this. Israel was called to be the servant of the Lord and failed miserably in doing so. So God promised that he would send another servant, a greater servant, to be Israel's substitute. And this servant would come to bring those who were scattered far back to God through being their substitute. But not just that. The servant in speaking here notes that's too small a thing. So he brings all who are far away from the Lord nearby. Speaking in this section of scripture, this is Jesus. Jesus is the servant of the Lord who came to be the substitute for Israel. He brought the far away nearby with his life. As we consider this section, uh, we can see how Jesus was the perfect substitute for God's people, Israel. Consider all that he did. The servant says here that he was chosen from the womb, called out from the womb, as those who have just celebrated Christmas. We know that Jesus has been the substitute from inside the womb of the Virgin Mary that he was called out. He was to be the one living in their place, living perfectly for them. Then it continues, and he talks about uh, his life. Today, as we consider the baptism of our Lord Jesus, 
We consider his public anointing, the demonstration that he is the Messiah. And therefore, we can consider all that Jesus did in his earthly ministry. This time on earth when he lived as the perfect substitute for Israel. Think of the many things that he did in their place. The glory of God certainly was demonstrated. Think of that very day at the Jordan. The Father calls out from heaven, This is my Son whom I love. I am pleased with you. The glory of God demonstrated. And then in Jesus' public ministry, the glory of God demonstrated through his miracles and many other signs and things that he had done. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the very glory of God, as this is said in Hebrews chapter 1. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact imprint of the divine nature. The glory of God demonstrated just as the servant spoke in the section of Isaiah. Yes, Jesus Christ is the servant who came to be the substitute for Israel. You think of all of the things that he did prior to his baptism, went down to Egypt as the substitute for Israel and came out. After his baptism, Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days, living as the substitute for Israel who wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. The servant of the Lord who came to do what they could not do. Speaking here in this section, Israel was made far off from God by their sin. Literally scattered after Isaiah's words, sent into exile. And here is the servant speaking about how he's going to bring them back to God. And this is fulfilled in a greater sense in Christ Jesus as he brings those back near God. And not just Israel, but all who are far off, even the coastlands, even those who are not of Jewish descent. Now, how did he do this? As I noted, as a substitute. Jesus brings the far away nearby with his life. Right? Because sin separates people from a holy God. So they needed Jesus to come and live the perfect life in their place. And then they needed Jesus to give his life for them. It is Jesus' life which brings the far away, nearby, nearby God. You need proper travel credentials if you want to go from one place to another, right? You wouldn't try to drive to California without a driver's license. You wouldn't try to fly to France without a passport. You need proper travel credentials. So the question is, how does one come near God? The proper credentials is Jesus' perfect life and the life that he gave on the cross. Since we understand that the proper and right travel credentials are Jesus' life, why do so many people desire to try to get near God with other means? Trying to use a fake ID, as it might be said. Trying to get near God. Think of the different ways that people might try to do this. Supposing that they can use their own life to get near God. But we know that is not possible. As is written elsewhere in Isaiah, even our righteous acts apart from Christ are contaminated by sin. All our righteous acts are like a filthy cloth. Or others want to try a Jesus plus method, adding to what Jesus had done. But we know that car won't start. 
You cannot get near God by adding to what Jesus had done. Much like a water-damaged passport won't work. That method of getting near God won't work either. There is only one way to be near our God, and that is the life of Christ. Yes, that perfect life that he lived in our place as our substitute, and the life that he gave innocently on the cross. So brothers and sisters, let us not approach God with false credentials to be near him. There are false credentials that people might try to hold on to, such as heritage. My grandpa built this church, therefore I ought to be near God. Another false credential might be religiosity. I do all the work behind the scenes at church, therefore I ought to be near God. Brothers and sisters, let us drop these false credentials. Yes, That plane will not fly. That will not take us near God. The only thing that brings you near God is that life of Christ. Let us look to him. Him who lived perfect for us, who died for your sins, who brought you near the God of the universe. You who were once far off are near God. And that is a blessed state to be in. Because you know that you will be with him forever in paradise. And you know today he is with you. The Holy Spirit remains and abides in you. You are near God. Every Sunday, through word and sacrament, Christ comes to you. You are near God. Jesus makes the far away nearby. Our question then is, how does what Jesus merited for us through his life come to us? You cannot go to the MVD and receive this ID, and a passport doesn't come through the post office. How does Jesus' perfect life and all that he won for us come to us? Well, It's through God's means of grace. In this section, we can consider the means of grace. And first, let's get a definition of that. The means of grace are the vehicles through which God delivers forgiveness, life, and salvation to people. The means of grace, let's name them, gospel and word and sacrament, Bible, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. These are the things that God uses to deliver to us his grace and his forgiveness. So consider in the section of Isaiah, as the servant speaks, he speaks about his use of the powerful word of God, one of these means of grace. He calls it a sharpened sword. During Jesus' public ministry, he wielded that powerful sword of the word of God. No one taught like Jesus taught. Jesus spoke beautiful parables. Jesus cut to the core with God's law, and he proclaimed life with the gospel. Jesus brings the far away nearby with the means of grace. Then, During Jesus' public ministry, he established the two other forms, baptism and the Lord's Supper, instituting the Lord's Supper on the night before he was betrayed. And after he had risen from the grave, he sent out his disciples to baptize. The servant says in this section that it would be too small a thing to just save Israel. And that's why Christ has given to his church these wonderful means to proclaim the gospel, to bring life, salvation, and forgiveness throughout the world. Think about that well-known section of the Bible, the Great Commission, where Jesus sends his disciples out. 
And he says, Therefore go and gather disciples from all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and by teaching them to keep all the instructions I have given you. Jesus sent out his disciples with the means of grace. Sent them out to baptize people and to instruct them with that powerful word. Because those are the means that God uses to bring the far away nearby. Brothers and sisters, we can consider our own personal testimonies. How did God bring you who were once far off because of your sins nearby him? I can share my testimony. On December 25th, 1995, at Trinity Lutheran Church in El Paso, Texas, parents brought forward twin brothers to the font. And Pastor Schultz poured water and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And through this wonderful sacrament, the Holy Spirit created faith in my heart. And then growing up, my parents brought me to Divinity Divine Lutheran Church and Bethlehem Lutheran Church. And at the home, they proclaimed the word to me where the powerful means of grace were brought to my heart. And the Holy Spirit worked, strengthening my faith. Then in 2009 at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Germantown, Wisconsin, I was confirmed. And I got to receive the Lord's Supper for the first time. Receiving Jesus' true body and blood for the forgiveness of my sins, further being strengthened through God's means of grace. And then continuously through since that day, the Holy Spirit has been coming to me through these means of grace, the gospel in word and sacrament. Brothers and sisters, I'm sure that you have a very similar testimony about how the Holy Spirit has worked in your life. Because we know that God uses these vehicles. And when you were baptized, the Holy Spirit created faith. When the word was brought to you, the Holy Spirit was working. When the sacrament was distributed, the Holy Spirit was working. Yes, that is how God brings the far away nearby. Jesus' baptism marked a beginning. It was his public anointing. For us, many of us, baptism marked the beginning, the beginning of that spiritual life. As the Holy Spirit continued to come to you time and time again through these wonderful means that God has given to us, we thank God for that. We recognize that these are the means that God uses. So then sometimes we might ask, why are we so tempted to use unreliable means? If you traveled over the Christmas break, did you make sure that your mode of transportation was reliable, that the airline was reliable or the car would work? Yet why do so many want to use unreliable modes of transportation to connect with the God of the universe? In American Christianity, this can be quite common. Relying on our emotions or ourselves to bring us near God. Something called the sinner's prayer. No, we cannot decide to come near God. We cannot bring ourselves. But God, in his grace and his love, comes to us. We who were once far off were brought near with the means of grace. Yes, we thank God for this. We thank God that it begins with baptism and he continues to shower his love on us. We who are once far off, brought nearby, today as we consider Jesus' baptism, uh, we consider the beginning of his public ministry, we consider all that Christ did for us in his life, in his perfect life, and in his sacrifice of his life to save us, and then how God connects us to it 
and gives us confidence of life eternal. Amen.